Okay, so uh, we come back to the action in the second quarter. Uh, Boise State on their last drive was pretty successful in the passing game. Uh, they're going to come back to the running game in this drive. So see the uh, offense changes strength here to the wide side of the field. And then they're going to bring this wide receiver up inside. They're basically in kind of a big set here. We really only have one wide receiving threat at that stage. Um, so one thing is Boise State really likes to run the sweep from this formation. That's something you got to watch out for. So the defense ne definitely needs to watch their outside leverage over here. And you can see in terms of numbers, they're really um, outnumbering the offense to uh, this side of the formation. Um, so Boise State actually runs inside zone here. And so what the offensive line is trying to do on this play is, first of all, um, they basically want each, each assignment, they want to wall the defender to the outside. It's not really a physical domination type of block. You, you can let the defender kind of run as long as you're maintaining that leverage on his shoulder where you can continue to push him outside if you want to. You just don't want to keep him from being able to fight back through the block. The running back here, he's going to be looking for initially kind of an A-gap run uh, to the play side, but the other side of this play is the back side of this play. And Boise State always brings their fullback and will try to kick out the defensive end on this side of the play or whoever the contained player is. Um, and so let's kind of watch as this play develops. So you'll see right at this point, we've got a lot of penetration on the play side. Martin doesn't have a play side run but he's got a great running lane to come to the backside here. Um, the defensive end has been aggressive, he's penetrated, but he's left this wide open. We've got a good little wall of blockers here established to keep these guys out of the play, and Martin's got a great running lane into the defense here. So you see that open up, and then you know he's able to pick up some pretty solid yards on first down. So second and three, and um, to check out this play. We'll come back and look at it in a little bit more detail. So they're running flex outside zone here, um, and they're able to pick up, pick up the first down, although the run probably doesn't go as much for as much as we'd hope it would. Step back there and look at that again. Um, so this play is interesting for a number of reasons. Um, one reason I think that I'm interested in this play is now with the lineup that Texas is planning on offensive line, You've got Mason Walters and Trey Hopkins at the guard and tackle spot. And then you've got Jones now at tight end. And so when you watch the initial blocks on this play, um, so what's going to happen is the tight end is going to come down and try to pin this defensive end. The guard is going to come and try to pin this defensive tackle. So for us, that's now... Jones and Walters making those pin blocks. Um, and those guys are, are two very capable blockers. And uh, then that gives us Espinosa and Hopkins pulling. Both guys are fairly athletic and going to be pretty strong pullers. So I, I would look for the flex outside zone, or I think Harson calls it the tight end down play. Um, I would look for that to be something that's pretty prominent in our offensive attack. Um, as we get out here, what we've done is essentially isolate this linebacker that was kind of split out wide. And this is a good situation for the offense. If this linebacker decides to engage the blocker here, that's Trey Hopkins for us, and that's a block that is going to be tough for that linebacker to come off of. Um, so if he does decide to engage, then the running back should be able to you know, take this play outside. If the linebacker tries to maintain that outside leverage, the running back should be able to cut upfield and pick up a pretty big gain. Um, a couple things to notice if we do back up here a little bit. The tight end kind of loses control of the defensive end here. Really, this pin, um, he's supposed to kind of wall him off and not let him get play side on this play. Um, and the defensive end is able to do that here. Uh, so he, you know, really the only block that I would say the offensive line wins on this play um, happens from the guard on the defensive tackle. So let's just look at that again. So he really, you know, just completely knocks the defensive tackle down. He's trying to penetrate on the play, so he just kind of gets an unexpected hit on him. 
Uh, but the rest of these blocks, we really don't dominate, but we're still able to get a pickup on the play just by uh, using the field that's available to us. So, you know, even though it's just a moderate gain on the play, I would that's a play where if that defensive um, end is not able to come down the line, we probably can pick up, you know, 8 to 10 more yards um, to play as run successfully. So now first down again, uh, third play in the drive, and Boise State comes out with four vertical threats um, in the pistol formation. And then we're going to throw a traditional screen here, and uh, Martin gets some good running room, and we pick up another first down. So just something to note here, um, again, Harson is thinking on this drive, he's really been focused on punishing aggression from the front. He ran that inside zone first, where the defensive front is aggressive, and if they're aggressive play side, they're going to basically run themselves right into being walled off and open up that backside cut like we saw. Then on the second play, we saw that flex outside zone where the defense had to be disciplined and get up, get outside to prevent the big play. Um, and now we see him inviting the aggressiveness from the defensive front again and punishing them uh, for being aggressive. You see all these numbers attacking, and that just leaves this wide open for Martin. Um, really, if this block gets made, then probably we gain even more yards here. So the next first down now, and... Um, See the motion here to change strength to the wide side of the field here. And then again, we see the same motion from the wide receiver to come in here and form the end of the formation. It's so actually, you know, so we get that same initial look that we got on the very first play of this drive. And again, we'll see the wall off and the backside cut become available. So again, that aggressiveness, you know, even though the, the front's getting some penetration, we're still able to pick up yards in the backside cut. Okay, so let's uh, let this play run and kind of talk about it as it develops. One thing is we're getting flex outside zone blocking there. We get a play fake. Defense completely buys in. More has all types of time. And then just launches deep to a wide open receiver. So what does it all mean? Um, <laughs> let's come back and just kind of understand uh, why this dagger play developed for uh, Boise State. And you hear that all the time in reference to them, where you kind of you see their offense developing, and then all of a sudden there's just this huge play. Uh, but it doesn't come out of nowhere. Um, one thing that Harson really did a great job on this drive of doing was kind of establishing a rhythm with the defense. So he finally found a way to consistently um, get some running game, some running game working, kind of uh, by using the defense's aggression in the front against them with the inside zone and the flex outside zone and then also with the uh, screen play. And what that did was these, you know, second line of defenders start having to clean up that play. And so over time that starts to mess with their head and their assignments. Um, and the big thing to note on this play is as it develops, just watch the safety. He's just staring this play down. And what should he be doing? He should be getting deep. Um, he does have responsibility on this play to help with this man coverage down here. You can tell that by the way the cornerback played it. Um, we did get an outside release if we just back up here a little bit and look at that one, one more time. The play is designed to work even if this safety drops deep. Because we're releasing outside, Moore should still be able to make a throw and potentially get the ball to the wide receiver. Um, but the reason he ends up so wide open is because this safety has just been pulled completely in by the flex outside motion. The other thing to remember is just how Harson, you know, he developed that sequence of plays. Early in the drive, he ran inside zone and followed it with flex outside zone. Then on this last series, he starts the drive with inside zone with the cutback again and then runs flex outside zone right behind it, or what feels like flex outside zone, but actually turns out to be the touchdown play. So just a really beautiful uh, play calling sequence from Harson. Um, you know, one, it works because he got something developing that punished basically what the defense was doing, but then he leveraged that success into a much bigger success.